I've really been wanting to purchase some professional grade watercolors as I have mentioned quite a bit in the recent past and I finally went ahead and did it. I held off on it for a really long time just because they are very expensive and it's an investment for sure but it's a lot to start off with that's for sure and initially I was actually looking towards getting a 24 half pan set of the professional Windsor and Newton watercolors but a art adventure here on YouTube recommended for me not to get those ones. He said they pretty much weren't worth it and he suggested the M Graham paints which I ended up looking into because they are very cheap off of Amazon which I'm like mildly skeptical about because everywhere else you can purchase these paints, at least for the sets of them. The tubes themselves are about the same price on places like Dick Blick and Jerry's Artorama and other online art supply websites, but the sets on Amazon are ridiculously cheap compared to anywhere you can get them, so I ended up purchasing one regardless. I got the intermediate set because it comes with 10 colors and I figured that was a very good starting point. I also picked up a Meaden palette. This is actually my second one. I do have an identical version of this one that I use for my Arteza gouaches, but I decided to pick this one up as my watercolor palette because it's very cute, it's pink, it's convenient, it's a nice size, and I just figured it would work very well for me. I actually already owned a couple of M. Graham paints. These are the ones that I previously got through Art Snacks boxes. So I had a couple to go off of, however one of them was a duplicate, which isn't too bad all things considered. And I also have some Daniel Smith paints that I'm going to include in this palette just because they're professional paints so I figured I might as well include them. These ones however were a lot smaller compared to the M. Graham tubes, but that is a-okay. It was definitely enough to fill up a half pan, so that worked for me. So in making this palette, I knew I would be getting colors in the future to add to the palette and I might end up switching over to a larger meet-in palette to begin with, so I wanted to label all of the half pans just to make sure that everything was where it should be, I knew what colors they were, just in case there was any confusion in the future in terms of me putting together the palette. So I went ahead and I went through the task of actually labeling each half pan, which turned out to be a complete and utter disaster <laughs> because when I was filling the pans, I forgot one and I completely ruined and it it was a mess. It was an absolute disaster, let me just tell you. I cut out all the footage of me messing it up because I was so frustrated. As soon as I realized what I had done, I was just like, I was so, <laughs> I was so broken down. I literally messed this up once I hit the second paint. <laughs> and then I didn't notice what I had done until I was at like the seventh one or something. So I had to peel off all the labels, take off all the pans. I decided the way I taped down the pans to begin with, I wanted to change. So I was not in a very happy mood once I finished with this and it was just a mess all around, but I got it done and everything's labeled and nice and wonderful and it's great. So when it comes to swatching these, I'm very unfamiliar in working with watercolors when the watercolors themselves are not are not dry. I am not used to using wet watercolor paints, so in swatching them, these are not the best swatches just because I'm not very comfortable working with wet watercolor paint. So keep that in mind if you're using these as reference in terms of quality of the paints. Something else that I experienced that was really weird is one of the colors on here when I poured it out of the tube, it was very separated in the beginning and the entire tube from what I can tell is extremely liquidy and goopy. Uh, I was very weirded out by that one and I don't know how I feel about that, but that was my only complaint with making the palette. And then it came on to doing an illustration with these paints. Initially, I would have included more than just the one just because this is my first experience going around with these paints and while this isn't a review by any means just because I've only used these paints for this one painting, uh, I would have initially liked to include more art for this video, but I decided to be very ambitious and do something that took a long time and was out of my comfort zone, so we're just doing one painting for this video to showcase these paints, which probably isn't in their best interest. I feel like this drawing itself really doesn't show off what these paints I'm sure are able to do, but I did have a lot of fun doing it, that's for sure. I was very inspired by Haikala's recent artwork that she had made, it was just like a night lady and another girl and I'm gonna explain it really poorly but this was inspired by one of Haikala's most recent artworks and I've been very into drawing dragons lately so I thought it would be really cool to have like a lady in armor and a dragon and that was, that was my inspiration. 
and then I added a background to it because I wanted to do a background, which I was very proud of myself for doing. I thumbnailed this idea out. It was great. The only thing that I'm not happy about is that I wanted the dragon to be standing next to her, but I ended up sketching it out a bunch of times and it was never working, and I finally got the face to like, mind you, the third face that I liked. I kept having to erase it to reposition the dragon, but it was a nightmare all around, but the dragon is sitting, and in my head it made more sense for the dragon to be standing, but aside from that, I do like how this ended up turning out. It took me a while, and uh, I'm very grateful that I put off working on this sketch for so long because something about the M. Grand Pants pants, the M. Grand Paints, is that they're made with honey, and I. I haven't researched much into it, I just know that one of their ingredients in the watercolors themselves are honey, but it keeps them from completely solidifying, and it definitely made the drying time of just like the surface of these paints in the half pans take so long. They, I think they'll always be tacky, but they were like sticky, very sticky tacky for the longest time. It probably took these paints, I would say, a week, week and a half to solidify enough that I can actually touch them with ha without having any paint come off on my finger, which isn't a bad thing by any means, but when I was testing them every couple of days to see if they had solidified, I was starting to get worried because I was like, I don't really like working with wet paints, and if they're completely wet on the surface, I don't really know how much I'm going to enjoy working with wet paints because for me, it was a big debate between getting Emgrams and Daniel Smith paints. I think in the end I'll end up purchasing a little bit of each and making a mixed palette of both of these brands, but for the time being I was like, oh man, should I have gotten some Daniel Smiths instead of the Emgrams? And they did dry. They did solidify enough that I was happy with it. Even if they didn't, I'm sure it would get to the point where I would just kind of get used to it, but... I was worried for a hot minute there because I thought everything was bad, but it's not. Everything is fine. So they definitely did take a long time to dry. This is a bonus though because they never fully solidify. They'll always be a little bit tacky. And the bonus of that is that they don't crack in their pans. They reactivate really well, etc. So I'm definitely someone who's not super familiar with any kind of professional paints. I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to watercolor paints to begin with, so I'm definitely not going to start talking about things like I know what I'm talking about. I, I definitely am a hobbyist when it comes to watercolors, and while I am comfortable with watercolors, I am not nearly the most knowledgeable person when it comes to the medium. I definitely would like to expand my knowledge about paints, be more comfortable with knowing pigment information and things along those lines, but for the time being, that is definitely not something I am an expert at, or anywhere close to being an expert at. I also ended up losing a decent amount of footage with this video. I was having issues with recording and I wasn't gonna strain myself over it, so every time I noticed something was going wrong with recording, I tried to fix it, but in the end I did end up losing a decent amount of footage towards the end of this piece. I lost a lot of the line work, pretty much all the white gel highlights, peeling off the washi tape, etc. So that was fun. I love losing footage even though it should have been recording, but it happens, it's not a big deal, even though I'm very distraught about it, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> but this is how this piece ended up turning out. I am really happy with these paints and I know I'll be expanding my collection of them soon. I have a lot of room in my palette left, so I will definitely be purchasing probably a mixture between Daniel Smith's and M. Graham's. I might try some other brands here and there, but those are the ones that I definitely want to focus on more so. But either way, it's definitely an upgrade from what I had before, which was the Shinhan Professional watercolors, but they were technically the student grade ones. So definitely an improvement on what I had before. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.